People often have questions about whether mining and quarrying can impact water. Here are some answers. We are not aware of any cases in Nova Scotia where blasting harmed a neighboring property's well or a community's water supply. This concern is simply unfounded. Quarries in Nova Scotia almost always operate above the water table, which means it is extremely unlikely that blasting could impact groundwater. Blasting vibrations take the path of least resistance and travel along the ground or through the air, not underground toward water sources. Blast vibrations usually dissipate within about 30 meters of the blast site, and regulated blasting buffers for Nova Scotia mines and quarries are 800 meters, so the risk to wells or anything else is extremely low. By the way, 800 meters is the biggest blasting buffer in Canada. Blasting is also done in places other than mines and quarries because it is often an essential part of constructing roads and buildings. In fact, there are blasts in downtown Halifax almost every day during construction season, all within a few meters of historic buildings, without any problems. Water is used on mine and quarry sites for various purposes, such as controlling dust and as part of processing. Mines and quarries test water discharges on at least a monthly basis and treat it to ensure water quality is within acceptable levels. Water being released back into a river or lake is often cleaner after it has been used in a mine or quarry than it was beforehand. Buffer zones and other mitigation measures such as ditches and berms help prevent runoff and other impacts on rivers, streams, ponds, lakes and wetlands. For example, mine and quarry operations have to be at least 30 meters from neighboring watercourses. Also, mines and quarries often create new wetlands as part of their reclamation plans. All operations are stringently regulated by the provincial government to ensure water and the environment are protected.